Tire buying can be confusing at the best of times. Even if you're just looking for a summer tire, there's now over 300 brands and thousands of patterns you can choose from. But what if you're looking for year round motoring? Well, there's not just summer tires anymore. There's up to six different types of tires in certain markets. To try and explain the differences between these six different types of tires, I've teamed up with the inventor of winter tires, Nokian Tires. We're starting the video in Evolo at their Arctic test centre called White Hell, where we'll be doing snow and ice testing on each of the tires. And then we're going to move to Nokia, home of Nokian Tires, where we'll do dry and wet testing. Luckily for this test, Nokian make a tire in each of the six categories. The summer tire in this test is the Nokian Hacker Blue 2. The American All Season is the Line AS. The European All Season is the Weatherproof. The Winter is the Snowproof, the Extreme or Nordic Winter Tire is the Hacker Polita R3 and the Studded Tire is the Nokian Hacker Polita 9. The first test will be the all important snow handling. So first tire around snow handling of the day is the Summer Tire. Now Nokian are one of the only, if not the only, tire manufacturer that make a European compound summer and a Nordic compound summer and this is actually their Nordic compound summer so in theory it's better than any other summer tire on the market and as you might be able to tell I am reversing off the circuit because there's a slight incline and on the second time round I couldn't get up it. I had very little ability to move the car quickly or accurately. I felt like a passenger at times that I might have bumped a few snowbanks so First tire out was the three minute 22.6 lap on the summer tire. Despite looking fairly similar to the summer tire, the American all season tire does offer a little bit more grip. I wouldn't call it a tire you'd want to use in heavy snowstorms or if you're in an area that got a lot of snow because traction still limited and braking still limited, but it got round in a 210.1. So over a minute quicker than the summer tire and less scary moments. The European all-season tyre or the American all-weather tyre, same thing, um, is represented here by the Nokian Weatherproof. Now this is a tyre that's known to, for being a very good snow tyre for an all-season tyre and it's the first tyre today I can actually drive the car. I don't feel like I'm just waiting to crash or I'm a passenger and that again shows in the lap time where the American all-season tyre was a 2 minutes 10. The European all-season tyre is a 136.8 so a much faster lap and it's just a usable controllable car and <laughs> quite a lot of fun so things are only going to get better from here the traditional winter tire here the Nokian snowproof is pretty much like the all-season tire but just a little bit more in every area so you've got a little bit more traction a little bit more cornering a little bit more braking again that translates into a slightly quicker lap time of a 134.4 so a couple of seconds quicker and a little bit more controllable the extreme winter tire sometimes called a nordic tire or a studless friction tire was faster again the car like moving from the all season to the winter tire the car was just a little bit better of everything and that translated into a few seconds in lap time with a 132.2 so as you would expect each time we've stepped up the winter tire chain things have got a little bit better and a little bit more fun last up is the studded tire now this tire studs are designed for ice and while it seemed to have as good at traction and braking as the Nordic winter tyre it didn't want to turn quite as well especially when on the brake so the lap time was a smidgen slower at a 132.9 but that gives us a good overview of how these tyres do from handling let's go look at the key safety quality and that's snow braking and ice braking Unsurprisingly, as the tyres got more winter bias, their snow braking performance improved, with the studded tyre stopping the car in the shortest distance. Sadly, due to a lack of snow grip, we couldn't get the summer tyre to the ice braking track. Once again, the studded tyre stopped the Volkswagen Golf in the shortest distance, with the studs providing a bigger advantage on ice than they did on snow. So, how to quickly conclude the snow portion testing of the day? Well, there's no huge surprises. As each tyre got more winter optimised, its performance improved as you would expect. I think the biggest surprise for me was just how good the American All Season tyre was compared to the summer tyre because they looked visually very similar. So it just goes to show what compound optimization can do. That said, it was still a fair chunk behind the European All Season in the snow. Let's move on to dry and wet testing and find where the balance and performance between the six sets of tyres lays there. Now 
doing wet testing in sunny central Finland, shockingly things have reversed. The summer tyre, which was obviously the worst in the snow and ice, is the best here with the summer tyre and the American all season tyre feeling very similar. They're both the unsiped tyres, so they're very direct on the front axle. They give you a nice positive turn in and a little bit of understeer, which is kind of what you want on a car like this. Where they differ is the American all season just has less grip everywhere and that's shown in the wet braking as well, but they both have a similar feel and a similar balance. Moving on to the soaked tyres, the Nokian weatherproof, the all season, and the winter, the Nokian snowproof, they both feel a little bit more wooden, a little bit more vague on the front axle, but that's because they're soaked tyres. That's how they get their advantage in the snow and ice. But both are very, very similar in lap time and braking. And then moving on to the Nordic compounds, so the extreme soaked soft compound tyres where they're designed for heavy snow and ice. These are both even vaguer and they've both got a lot more push understeer, but they're doing respectable times considering what the intention of the tyre is. All tyres show a similar trend in dry handling with the summers being the fastest and then it just steps down from tyre to tyre with the studs and the Nordics being the slowest and I think the main difference between those two surprisingly is more the sound than anything else. Studs obviously very tappity and very teary on the surface but both tyres doing a good job considering they're not really intended to be thrown around a dry handling lap. Dry and wet braking followed the same trend as dry and wet handling. During dry braking testing, the summer tyre had a big advantage over the rest of the tyres with the extreme winter and stud winter tyres showing the trade-off you make for extra snow and ice performance. It was a similar result for wet braking but this time the American all season lagged behind the European all season and the winter tyre. Again, the extreme Nordic winter and studded tyre couldn't match the tyres designed for warmer climates. Okay, so how do we conclude this video across the six tire types in the dry, wet, snow and ice? Well, firstly, this video wasn't intended to tell you which tire is the best. I believe by now they're all test winners in their respective categories, so all six technically are the best. And well done to Nokian for making such a broad range of excellent tires. What this video was intended to do was highlight the differences between the tyre types and explain why maybe someone who lives in the UK shouldn't be running a Nordic winter compound, maybe someone who lives in northern Finland shouldn't be running a European all season because it just doesn't work for your conditions. Starting with the summer tyre, it's no surprise this tyre was the best in the dry and wet, had the nicest steering feel, best braking capabilities and was just the nicest tyre to use. Where it failed, unsurprisingly, was snow. Its snow performance was atrocious and its ice, well, I couldn't even get to ice braking without crashing and I did get stuck on a hill, which was really embarrassing. So that tire failed in the snow completely. Next up, the American all season tire. Now this surprised me and it shows you exactly what engineers can do with compound tuning. It was quite a significant step over the summer tire in the snow and ice. Where it didn't have the performance was in the wet. And that's not because of the snow and ice performance per se, it's probably more to do with the fact the American market demands higher wear or higher tread life from their tyres. So this tyre would probably last an extra 20,000 kilometres compared to like a European counterpart. But the flip side of that is wet performance because wet performance and tread life are two very opposing qualities. Next up are this pair, the European all season, the Nokian weatherproof and the European winter, the Nokian snowproof. Now this is where things get a little bit more confusing but can be explained by newness I guess. Now the Nokian Snowproof is Nokian's latest and greatest Central European winter tyre and the Nokian Weatherproof, although it's an excellent all season tyre, it's now a couple of years old and has been called in the past an all season tyre that's the snow specialist. So where you've seen the Nokian Weatherproof slightly beating the Nokian Snowproof in snow and ice performance, which isn't the way it should be, and then the Nokian Snowproof beating the Nokian Weatherproof in the dry and wet, you might be right in thinking that that's a little bit backwards, but it goes to show the advances Nokian have made with the snowproof. Moving on to the last two, the Nordics. These are the snow specialists. These are designed to be run in countries where for three months a year you have packed snow on top of ice on your roads. You don't see dry and wet performance, which is why they've sacrificed some of the dry and wet performance. This isn't a performance they need to excel in because it's not a condition they often see. Where they need to excel is snow and ice. And that's where these two, re they're really, really strong. And I think the Nokian Hakapalita R3, so the studless Nordic compound, how much better that is on ice compared to the Central European. Don't, this is one of the best Central European tires for snow and ice. And this builds on it exponentially. It just goes to show what clever engineering Nokian can do with compounding. So, Fair play to Nokian for doing this tyre in particular, but then 
If you want ultimate ice performance, we've shown studs of the way forward. Nokia have produced an amazing range of tyres. It's great for us consumers because it allows us to narrow down to the specific qualities we want for our motoring in our part of the world from our tyres. It gives us a real good choice. So hopefully this video's highlighted exactly what's available on the market and exactly what you can or should be fitting. If you are still a little bit confused, check out tarreviews.co.uk because there's lots more information on that or ask a question below. I'll do my very best to answer everything. Thank you once again to Nokian Tires for lending me cars, tires, facilities. Without them, it wouldn't have been possible. And it's very brave of them to show the full range of differences between the six tire types because not many manufacturers would do that. So fair play Nokian. Um, thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe for plenty more videos like this. And as always, safe motoring. Thank you.